Ricky's been busy. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Rick Heinrichsen is Gibson's custom shop carver, and every year or so we get his next drop of art guitars. Artsy-fartsy guitars aren't for everyone, but it's fun to appreciate them, even if you're not the type of person who would buy them. Our first one is known as Henna One. It's a pretty interesting Les Paul custom. Gibson got him a better wood burner tool, so he wanted to make full use out of it, as that is the medium that was used to create this. So his process would start, he would draw all this on, and then go through with his wood burning tool to make all these interesting designs. So it will have a slight textured feel to it. But I see a couple of flowers, kind of like some basket weave and stuff. But I love the optical illusion that he's created over here. It doesn't even look like there is an edge right there, but you still have the Les Paul custom binding layer matched to the side with this kind of toothed design. I'd actually say I'm a bigger fan of the edge of this guitar than the top because it's very satisfying, nice and repeating. The Gibson Gear Guide actually has a video showcasing these guitars a little bit, so feel free to check that out, but you can kind of see how it is textured. Then if you noticed, even the pickup covers are matching. Now are those wood burnt? No, they're just regular and he painted them and they're all lacquered up. But what I feel these stock photos don't capture that their videos did is it's still a nice glossy finish on top of it. This nearly looks like an unfinished Les Paul, but when you get that whole light sheen on it from the gloss top, that's when this one really comes to life. But the backside of the guitar, it's fairly basic, has very nice wood grain, but we do have a little bit of a tattooed design at the heel, which is something that he likes to do on many of his art guitars, like for example, here's one where he did a fish relief carving. But people on the internet like to say, isn't that gonna affect playability? And you know, maybe a little bit, so that's why this one just appears to be flush with the design of the neck. Very cool use of wood burning and paint. But just like his previous release in the Master Artisan collection, this one comes bundled with a Mesa Boogie amp that has a similar designed pattern to it. This is the Boogie California Tweed amp. The grills are made of wicker cane, and it's a 6v6 power tube amp with 12 AX7 and 12 AT7 preamp tubes. And it can be ran from 2, 10, 20, 30, or 40 watts. And it's running the Black Shadow Custom 90 12-inch speakers. And has been nitro lacquered to protect the designs as well as, you know, just give it an interesting vibe. Now, according to the Gibson Garage guys, there are some Easter eggs hidden within the design. So let me know if anything stands out to you. I like the way that he incorporated some flowers around the screws on the top. And the whole basket effect. That's one of my favorite parts of this. And cool ported on the sides. And you could just appreciate the natural beauty of the maple on the back, which just a little bit of spillover. But man, those Easter eggs must be really hidden. I didn't see any. Also, all these new guitars came with a custom strap to match the guitar. So here you can see what this one looks like. But this set is sold. And I didn't notice this before. It appears to have a matching truss rod cover. But if you're wondering how much this one is, it actually sold incredibly fast. That $50,000. His previous release looked like this, and had a Les Paul that looked like this, that had kind of that whole wicker basket design put on it, and I think it sold for about the same. Carving and wood burning is a little bit of a different thing, but I would honestly say I liked this set better. But now for the one that I was so tempted to buy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a second to take this in. This is known as Psychedelic Art Number no. 2, put onto a Les Paul Custom. It's so trippy, I love it. If you're wondering why it's called Number no. 2, that's because there's Psychedelic Art Number no. 1 that was done around 2018. It was created for one of the trade shows, and it ended up selling to a shop in Texas. And back then, they were asking 10 grand for it, and everybody thought they were crazy. Nowadays, that would be a steal. I was a big fan of this, because up close, yeah, it's just a bunch of rainbow colors and a swirly design. But the whole thing was painted, including the matching tuner tips. The farther away you get, it just starts to become a static mess. Now word on the street is Gibson actually bought it back from that dealer for their own personal collection. Now whether that's true or not, I don't know. But here it is, number two. So this one's psychedelic in a different way because you have a repeating circular pattern with a crescent shape in it. Kind of reminds me of like peacock feathers. You got the large circle, a small circle, and then like your whole semicircles, and then it just repeats a million times. And then you've got a white dot into a blue space area area in between there, and it's just repeated on the entire guitar. I cannot imagine hand painting this. It would be so monotonous because he even did the back. But at the end of the day, I think it's worth it, especially when you see the headstock. The garage sent me this, and it really helps you appreciate it even more in this photo. Absolutely love the fact that he did the whole black outline around the mother of pearl. It really tidies up the look and really helps that stand out. However, look at these circles. They're actually all different colors. So some of them have kind of like a sparkly blue where it almost looks like it's painted 
wood material, whereas other ones are dark. So there are more variations in the design than you can see in the stock photos. It almost appears to be like a 50-50, so that'll add to the whole trippiness of it. But look, even your tuners have the matching paint on it. They painted your truss rod cover. Now, if you're asking why they didn't do the washers and the screws, well, it's because any part that could potentially move has the potential to chip in the future. So if we go back here to the bridge and tailpiece, you can see he mainly did all of them. But like, again, the moving areas, he had to leave that because at the end of the day, they still have to warranty these things. Same thing with our thumb wheels. But the knobs are pretty sweet. He actually had to paint the inside of them. So it's not the outside that's painted. It's that little cavity on the inside. But my favorite part is the fact that he went all out and did the fretboard again. Now, were the frets painted? No. Just like everything else, anything that has to be used, they have to leave it. But they did throw yellow strings on it just for fun. I would have loved to have seen this still with the binding exposed, but give it a different trippy pattern. Kind of like a herringbone design or something, just in crazy colors that like outlines it. I'm not sure if that would have worked or not. But if you look very closely, you can just barely see the outline of the binding that's existing. So yes, it is a Les Paul Custom with a bound headstock. It's just a bit hard to see. But here's a look at the matching strap for this one. Maybe not as boisterous. That's because the paint looks different on varying surfaces. But how much is this one? $25,000. Which again, for, you know, crazy art guitars, it's one of the more reasonably priced ones. That's why I was really tempted to pick it up for a full review and documentation. But it's not something that I could afford to keep right now. But if anybody wants to new guitar day it, <laughs> I would love the opportunity to see it in person. I like the psychedelic art series. Can't wait to see what he comes up with next. But now we're getting into some interesting ones. We had two kind of tiled influenced ones. The first one is a 58 Carina Explorer. So those are 10 grand brand new to start with. Now we've got the art on top of it. He called it the Mayan Mosaic. The color scheme on this one wasn't my favorite, but you have to remember, he had to carve out the Carina wood in all these little tiny crack details. Still make it look believable that it's like some sort of a tiled piece together. And that effect really comes to life in person. Like it has that whole snakes in texture to it. Then it has the whole continuation of the theme on the sides, as well as on the back where he has this little motif dude. I bet that one would be a very interesting playing experience, just having all the texture to it. But if you look closely, it still does indeed have the pick guard on it. He just carved a similar thing into it. And you got the matching pickups. The bridge pickup looks like something that's Eddie Van Halen inspired. And it's got a matching yellow headstock. But I really like the strap on this one. They did a nice job on that. But I feel like Gibson's stock photo didn't do it much justice because that's just the end. The garage sent me a photo of the rest of it and you've got the continuation of the Mayan guy that's also on the back of the guitar. That one's a bit pricier though at 35,000. But by far one of the most standout pieces is the Mediterranean mosaic. So this time they did it on the Flying V and Rick, you really outdid yourself this time. It reminds me of like a fancy tiled pool. He's got all these little squares across the entire thing that he had to hand chisel out and then hand paint the thing not once, but he said some of the colors four different times. If you follow his Instagram page, he'll give you these teaser shots and here's what it looks like painting one, one of these squares in real time here. And imagine, you know, if he gets some paint in the crack, you gotta take a toothpick, get it out, just be really careful. He's working under a microscope here. And he had to do that multiple times for each one. Talk about tedious, but the end result is fantastic. They put this like cool swirly design over here. Then you got some triangular ones and a bunch of zigzags. This is like a nice blending of that explorer and the psychedelic one together in a really nice palatable color scheme. But check out the headstock in regular photos. Even though Flying V's usually aren't bound, he has this nice border going around it in black. And then you kind of got a triangular flight pattern design with all the colors. That worked out fantastic with the big gaudy Gibson logo. And of course, we got to throw a flashy truss rod cover on it too. Now, we didn't go crazy with the fretboard or anything, so it still looks fairly traditional. But yes, we do have the rubber guard. And then we didn't even get to see the back yet. It's got more of the swirly designs and other optical illusions. That one kind of looks like a piano. There weren't very many good photos of the neck, but it's got a whole bunch of that going on too. So I bet it would feel similar to like the Z-Glide necks, but maybe not as much. I bet a lot of people could appreciate that one and it's sold instantaneously for $35,000. But there is one left in this collection known as Old West One Les Paul Custom. 
<laughs> and here, this whole time, I thought it was a Les Paul Jr. But yeah, sure enough, that looks full body thickness with a carved top. So it'd probably be more akin to the Les Paul Sr. that we talked about in this episode, which was a Music Zoo exclusive at the time. So again, if you go to Rick's page, you know, he teases you about these things. And he's been teasing the saloon one for a while. I remember it all the way back here where he was just, you know, first drafting up the prototype design before he actually started into the wood. I was a little bit worried about how this one was going to turn out. It kind of seemed a little bit tacky and cheesy. And I've seen it done on like some Fender guitars. But the end result turned out pretty good, all due to how it got stained. Because I thought maybe they were going to paint everything realistic colors. And there's like a little bit of extra shading in some areas, but not in all. But he decided to try the rope binding around here that's all carved into it. And then instead of inlays, he used his wood burner for this cool stagecoach robbery motif. But your eyes are not deceiving you. That is a maple fretboard. So that's pretty sweet. And then look at your headstock. It appears to be unbound. You've got your lucky Gibson horseshoe right there. I like that. And he tried to mess with the logo. I would have liked to have seen it slightly slanted like it normally is, just because it looks so strange <laughs> to see one perfectly flat like that. But this looks quite nice in natural lighting like this. But it doesn't look like they did too much on the back, but okay, it's unbound. And I've never really seen mahogany wood grain looking exactly like that on a Les Paul. So that must have been a unique stock of wood. Even the neck looks like raw and unfinished. But again, hop over to the video and you can still see some of the sheen. But I don't think this is a high gloss finished guitar like the other ones. He wanted it to look like worn leather. <laughs> I like the strap. It's got a couple of bullets in it. That's a nice touch for their highway robbery scene. And it's priced at 30000 So Rick, fantastic job. Always fun to see what you cook up. Please let me know which one was your favorite down in the comments. I'm sticking with the psychedelic art. It's unique. You don't see it in many other guitars. And I can't wait to see what he comes up with next. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.